I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not fucking doing this. Sit the fuck down. I'm not doing this. Welcome to Lobster Magnet and Friends. I'm here with my buddy Goro Gregoro. AKA Akoji. <laughs> And my buddy Zavul, who did not want to join us in this shitty cosplay session, but then again, to his credit, we didn't give him any time to prep, so. Yeah, yeah, hi guys. <laughs> God fucking damn it. The, the three admirals are united. The strongest you force can... on YouTube for you... One Piece video blog criticism has returned. Am I still allowed to say fuck? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, you can say fuck. It's gonna, you can say fuck as much as you want. Uh, uh, you awesome. could... Okay. You can okay. at least say, uh, oh, Benjamin Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know so I, any other, <laughs> I, any other, uh, fate conspired, other lines. Fate sp conspired to take us apart and make us not be able to do this. But I, through the power of bugging Amazon, have changed my schedule. So hopefully maybe we'll do it a little bit more often. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I have plans. Big fucking plans but anyway let's get into it we've got a lot of shit to cover so it's not we're going to be talking about basically everything since the last time we talked about it which was the end of whole cake island up oh until Lord. the reverie okay. up until wano and currently so guys what do you think of how whole cake island ended mm, okay <laughs> it, it was uh yeah it wasn't like uh I, I mean it wasn't the i don't think it was like the most amazing way to end it but uh I, I'm I'm still kind of sad Sanji didn't just get to kick his family in the face. <laughs> yeah, that was like disappointing. Like on one hand, I like I love the fact that like Sanji has the raid suit power up waiting, because uh, <laughs> you know when he, when he actually uses that, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, but will he ever? Because man, did he not want to put that thing on? Yeah, I don't know. Also, having having also gone back and started, and I've been watching the anime too. Have you fucking heard the sound effects that correspond with that fucking thing? No. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. The fucking... It, it, it just, just... At some point, just go go YouTube the fucking raid suits, and they, they, they make, like, these, like, squishy bouncing noises when they walk. <laughs> so it's, like, some kind of, like, BDSM kind of suit with, like, lots of... No, 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 no. It, it, it makes fucking cartoon noises. With <laughs> oh. <the mobile. laughs> Like, you remember Invader Zim when, like, Gur would squeak everywhere he went? Yeah. Yeah, kind of like that, but stupider. <laughs> okay. Like, it, it is it is fucking embarrassing to wear. <laughs> like, I would hover everywhere just to avoid making those noises. <laughs> well, we can assume that his is awesome. And, you know, Nami gets Zeus, which was nice, which was awesome. Okay, nice. yeah, that okay. was cool. That that was that cool. was she, that was she nice deserved the power up and and of course poor Jimbei gets sidelined he's the Sh you know Schrodinger's straw hat he's a fucking straw hat eat a dick he's their helmsman oh my fucking he's god he's not I there he's not I mean that, he had yeah, a bad, well, you know what, right now like moment. half the fucking straw what... hats are just kind of in fucking limbo all over the goddamn place <laughs> so if we're using that fucking category about half of them are it's sidelined like different roster bullshit motherfucker. Yeah, I, but, I mean that is true, but I feel like there's they've had like more crew time than Jimby has. We haven't had like you know Jimby be in like a transitional arc where they're going to the new place, and I feel like that's what you need to be an official Straw Hat member. Look, I mean Brooke yeah. showed up for all of like one arc after um, Thriller Bark, and then just got punted off into the ether by a giant bear monster. So, if we're going by that definition, Jinbei's part of the crew. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, he is technically a part of the crew. They just don't show him yet in the official roster. Look, if you want to have a fucking argument about who's part of the crew, I still think Carrot's going to join the crew. Oh, not the oh. fucking Carrot argument. Carrot is like a VV. She will find some stupid purpose and then head off and do her own shit. But she I don't does know. Have we're, that we're full supposedly power. we're pretty far into this, and she is just like stuck on the ship right now. I don't know what her fucking job is going to be. I, I still kind of think like cabin boy. <laughs> I I think she's going to be like another sacrifice for you know like uh, the Wano arc or something like that. Are they going to kill Carrot? 
I, I don't see I that doing possible. that. Oda never kills anyone. Although I guess you could say like hey, Sam, Pedro, Sam. and Ace. <laughs> yep. Well, we did get two deaths in. Um, but I'm like so skeptical that those deaths stuck. Oh, you think like Petro's still alive? He's gonna crawl away from like. I hope not, but you know, you threw away that card after you you brought back Pell to do fuck all. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Where does the Pell live? And Pedro doesn't. The this logic sometimes, you know, One Piece death logic. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm still baffled that Gecko Moria was alive. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of pissed about it. I, I really like the idea that Doffy just like murdered the fuck out of him. <laughs> <laughs> like that. That would just have been perfectly in character. Like, hey, what up? Oh shit! And then just murder off screen. <laughs> like, we don't see it. We don't see it happen. But like, maybe for one of the fucking cover art things, we just get like a picture of Gecko Moria, and he's just like decomposing in the sun somewhere. <laughs> 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 One Piece all of a sudden gets really fucking dark. Well, <laughs> if we didn't, then we wouldn't have gotten that awesome check-in that we got this week, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Okay, yeah, week. that was fucking... Uh, okay, okay, Blackbeard actually having a beard is fucking... Fucking... Just fuck. Fuck. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that that was my favorite part of the entire chapter last week. He just <laughs> looks so fucking badass. I didn't like, even notice is, he had a beard. This is finally a man who... This is a man who understands what being a pirate is. <laughs> being a pirate, getting shit faced, killing everything and anything you want, and amassing as and, much power as you can and, while drunk and, and women. angry. And, and <laughs> women, don't forget. <laughs> he, he literally has his own paradise island. He literally created his own Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he finally has he's finally got that shit. I think lock. this is the first time we've actually seen like a pirate acting like a pirate in one piece in the there, sense there have been other examples but it's like been minor it's been so minor it, it, yeah. it, it, it's like you know one piece is like oda's tapestry to like make a manga about everything else <laughs> that he loves but you know pirates is like the main thing and, and every now and then you come back and you're like oh yeah this is pirate stuff and when it's done, <laughs> when something that's like legitimately like pirate related like booty uh you know bink sake um, what you call it? Uh, I don't know if the Davy Davy Jones back games a little, uh, but you know nautical no, that shit. Doesn't fucking count. That was a terrible <laughs> fucking art. <laughs> I thought you loved Foxy. Oh, I mean, in that way that I like what that you like showing people terrible movies. <laughs> <laughs> you, you went like completely. I, I like I like fucking with my fiance about it because she actually likes foxes, <laughs> <laughs> and so like just. His very existence pisses her off. <laughs> <laughs> like, if rolled up, he's like, this is literally the best crew ever. And then he just showed up and just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so offended right now. <laughs> you don't want to know how you know that, like, Foxy isn't, like, considered to be, like, untouchable material, that they, like, brought him back for several filler arcs? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, though. They, they, have, they have a uh, fucking dog dog fruit model kitsune. Yeah, oh, she's gonna fucking love that shit. Yeah, yeah the, the, mm -hmm. the cat, I, I must admit, I love like the Catrona Devon outfit. Like, I, I thought that was like a great fucking like you know jewelry or you know Bonnie pirate uh, outfit that he gave her. Wait, do, do you guys not what? remember it? Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, Catalan Devon, she's like one of the people that Blackbeard broke out of level six. She's like not really much of a character right now, but you know, she gets introduced in that chapter. Oh, the like, one that was shape shifted. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. She is the mythical fox fruit. And she shape shifted, uh, and then she, she has this like badass pirate outfit. And I'm like, hey, uh, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. She she yeah. Has, she has the the ability Kitsune or like tricksters and illusionists, so she can I guess like just make illusions of other people, and she can assume that form. And well, I assume like I assume that. she'll have like other yeah. powers because that's way too similar to like um what you call it, Mister Two's uh, face power. Okay, look, motherfucker, we've had like three or four different fire based powers. <laughs> we've had Ace. We've had. Um, Akoji or Akino. Akino. Yeah. Um, and then we have fucking Charlotte Oven, okay? <laughs> so Oh Oh yeah, the oven mitts guy. Yeah, yeah. And then we have uh Miss All S shit, what the hell was that? Not Miss, Miss All, All Sunday. Was it Miss All Sunday? 
Whoever the fuck ate the kilo kilo fruit? Oh yeah, yeah, true. We 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 we've kilo, had we've kilo. had the pound fruit. It's, all right, so we've had we've yeah, had and then mock vice. Yeah, so it's yeah. tons. And, what it's it's basically metric and fucking um. Oh Jesus Christ! Now I'm just blanking on it. Wait, whatever the fuck. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. they're you, pretty you much can the basically same. have like fifty bajillion different similar goddamn fruits. <laughs> fuck, they have like different zone fruits that are just different models of shit. Like you can have a fucking German Shepherd and a fucking. Uh, wiener dog and shit like that. So you yeah, fuck it. <laughs> all right, all right. F fair enough. Fair enough. So, what were your guys two progno? All right. So to keep this slightly concise, I'm gonna we're each gonna like give our final opinion of Whole Cake Island, and then you know I'll go first, then Goro, then uh, Zabul. So, all right. All right. So Whole Cake Island overall was a pretty good arc. I was a little bit annoyed that the ending dragged out. I don't think it needed to drag out as long as it did. Um, you know, the Luffy versus Category fight was great, and I, you know, enjoyed the like, flash Category flashback where you basically learn that Big Mom is um, an, kind of like an abusive, neglectful mom, and that all her children were just left to wander the streets. <laughs> but uh, you know, I think that could have like we we could have used more of that and less like fuddling with the cake. But overall, I think it was like the best arc of the New World. But you know, it still suffered from arc fatigue. I think he could have taken like twenty chapters off of that and resolved things. And you know, the Vin Smokes deserved a better punishment. They should have gotten like a big bigger comeuppance so i don't know i'd say the arc was a solid eight overall maybe 7.5 just because there are a lot of little naggling issues that uh, you know i would have liked but i did love big news morgan giving the fake news about like oh, um, yeah. about <laughs> like you know basically turning luffy into an unofficial official yanko <laughs> goro you're next goro hello uh Hello? Uh, yes. We got a little connection interrupt. Uh, keep going. Okay, so, yeah, I liked how all the bounties were raised um, at the end of it, and on, Luffy being unofficial Yankau as well. Um, oh, Lord. He, um, whatchamacallit, uh, that, that last chase with Big Mom felt, it did feel like it lasted way too long. I think they could have cut out a lot of that. I mean, I agree, like, Sanji doing the sort of finishing blow against Big Mom was, a, was pretty appropriate to making her a cake or whatever. Um, but, like, to get chased by Big Mom, like, all the way, like, from the collapsing cake tower to, like, through the island, onto the ship, through the ocean, uh, onto another island through more ocean uh, is like a, a bit too much of a chasing when you know the arc was like winding down um and another thing i did like uh the fishmen like arriving at the very end uh, oh yeah fucking dog tooth luffy dog tooth versus luffy was pretty good but i mean the end of that fight kind of felt like a little bit of a uh, it w it felt like a little bit of a cop out because he like self injured himself during the middle of that fight too. Like that was like shaping up to be one of my favorite fights of all of One Piece up until the point where Luffy doesn't earn the victory and Katakuri has to like cripple himself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I was kind of like, oh man, it just doesn't feel quite right for Luffy to to win this fight now. It's just like. And it's already been going on for too long. But I did want to see that that fight to its very conclusion. It just it went on for uh, a bit too long, I guess. Overall uh, arc rating. Oh yeah. Um Yeah, it was Yeah, it was a seven point five for me too. Uh and I think the category fight in the very beginning raised it up for me. Oh, oh, for the overall arc. Yeah. 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 For the entire, the, arc. The entire arc. Yeah, the entire arc. Um Yeah, I guess. Shit. <laughs> it was it was like yeah, it was like a seven point five just because it it like dragged on a little bit towards the end. Uh had a near yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Isaac. It had a near perfect run, but then it just kind of like kept on shooting itself on the foot. All right, Zavul, your thoughts? Oh boy. Okay, so 
my opinion has been compromised because I've been watching the anime too. <laughs> and oh man, oh man, did fucking uh, Dress Rosa just drag on forever after, <laughs> after that experience in the fucking anime. Whole Cake Island has just felt like a fucking breeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this, this is going so fast. I feel great, you guys. <laughs> There's barely any arc fatigue. This is amazing. <laughs> Probably the best thing I've ever watched in like months. <laughs> I've heard they've done so. A I, I've, I've kind of got that problem going for me. So I'm like, fuck it. It's a nine, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You, what you realize it hasn't. It hasn't taken us like five episodes to get through something important. Something important just fucking happened this episode. <laughs> <laughs> plus you get the musical numbers oh yeah plus I got the fucking musical numbers which I fucking love so you you've been watching it throughout this whole time with your fiance yeah like, he's, um, he's been doing oh, a great one piece rewatch oh sweet Jesus um so I'm caught up with the uh the manga but since for the last fuck uh th almost three years maybe a little longer i have been watching one piece with my fiance and we are almost <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like we have just like burned through this shit <laughs> that that is that is dedication right there I, I like we i i will watch stuff by myself but like as collectively um like as an apartment i don't think we have watched anything else for like over two years <laughs> <laughs> You've just been going through the, 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 All like, the, 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 the 900 plus episodes. Like, we will go through journey. like two or three episodes, sometimes more a night. <laughs> like, five days a week, sometimes more. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Dress Rosa was just like a beating my face against the wall. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> And by the time I we got the whole thing. That's why I switched to the manga. Like, I mean, well, yeah, I know. <laughs> But I, I've I'm already watched I've already read the manga, so we're doing this now. I'm just like beating my face against the wall, going, sweet fucking Jesus, why is this happening? We jumped at fucking um whole cake island. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I can do this. This is great. Maybe I should watch the anime again now. Now that dress rose is over. Oh god, there, it, there are some problems with it. Oh sweet Jesus. There there are some serious fucking problems, but Oh god, they they made Raju just so fucking creepy. It's unpleasant to watch. <laughs> they like it's up like, the fan service. I've seen a few of like the the Oh god, they, they up the fan service sequences. so much and then on top of it they just like because they up the fan service constantly, it's just like look, I I I didn't sign on for like this weird like incest thing Toei is doing. Can you not? This was not in the manga. Do we have to do that? <laughs> yeah, she's got you in the scene God. where, like, it, it plays out pretty much exactly like it did in the manga, but because of how the camera's framed, you get the idea of, like, that, like, Sanji's, like, turned around a balcony, and he's, like, looking out over the over the window. Yeah, basically turns... watching, watching the uh, Vin Smoke army train, and then he turns around, okay? So, like, what we see is, like, implied to be like what we see as the camera is like implied to be what he sees as he turns around and it's just a fucking close-up of reju's tits <laughs> it's like it's a close-up of her tits a close-up of her legs just all oh over my... and, and oh, then sanji yeah. like proceeds to like proceed with like manga material saying like why is that disgusting picture on the wall of like our dad killing kings <laughs> but like you know <laughs> the, the yeah, so it's just like again i will say this over and over again not only is it fucking obnoxious that one piece has so much fucking fan service but it is goddamned infuriating how lazy toei is with it it's just like it's like what we, we haven't had fan service in about 15 minutes fuck it just throw in pictures of tits and ass <laughs> do we need a reason no just zoom in on them just fuck it just fuck it just zoom in on them just hard pan just go go <laughs> And it leads to some really awkward questions. Like, why is Sanji looking at his sister's tits? <laughs> that, that was, like, one of the, like, classiest things Oda did. He didn't, like, you know, go into, the, like, the weird fucking little sister fetish that, like, seems to have taken over Japan for some oh, reason. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, really geez. fucking happy. Incidentally, if anyone likes that, go watch Bunny Drop and then stab yourself in the eyes. <laughs> 
I don't know what that is. It, it's like yeah, it's uh, <laughs> probably for the best. Probably for the best for everyone. Okay. okay. <laughs> In fact, I actually, I, I want you to go watch it. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Just go watch it, and you'll know the part with you'll know the part where I just rage quit. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny. I remember we watched okay. it, like a screening of it at Oticon, and we we both, me and Scott, were like, "Oh, we're so glad we saw this. This is so this sweet. Is, this is sweet and adorable, and like has like an honest taste on like a slice of my life emotional stuff, like caring for children and everything else. Oh, I might God. actually go to the dealer's room and try and find this. This sounds amazing." And, and then, then something horrible happened, didn't no, it? No, no. And then I went and looked it up on Wikipedia, and apparently there is like a time jump, and like everything before is like this guy in his twenties is like, okay, I just like, I, I have I have managed to adopt this like eight year old child. My my parents just died, and all this shit's happening. And, the and child basically, is, like, well, he thinks that the child is technically his aunt or something because his father had his grandfather, or you know, his father was it his father or grandfather father had like a yeah. had affair and this was like their child and like he, he ends up adopting the child because she's basically been thrown out of her family and like it's basically like oh shit i'm a single father and like realistic portrayal of all the fucking like pain in the ass shit that comes with like suddenly being a parent and then there's a time skip and like she wants to do him and also he's into it I was just like, I like looked it up on Wikipedia. Like, this sounds great. Let's see if there's got any review. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy I didn't pay for this. I would be so angry. <laughs> I was just like, I would be so angry that I bought that. So, 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 so Scott, you're waiting for whole kick on was a nine yeah 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 it is now <laughs> just, okay. just, just for seeing all the extra stuff and like the, the musical numbers which it, that's even the kind with of the thing. weird incesty thing <laughs> well, 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 or the, the you know the tit random tits look I'm, I'm i'm doing an amalgamation here okay the anime was so fucking amazing at literally avoiding fucking dress rosa style bullshit but also the manga didn't have the weird incest vibe so nine oh yeah <laughs> good to go <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm forgetting a lot of like some of the great parts of the arc too. Like Big Mom did have like a really good backstory. Well, I want to raise my let, score. Let, to let's eight. let's save <laughs> let's save the Big Mom discussion because we and Scott have been bitching about Kaido, and we're gonna get into that. So, all right, transition into the next arc, the best worst arc of all time. Basically, me and Zavul were always pissed that like you know we want more in between shit, we want more of the world turns shit, and it's finally here, the, the reverie. reverie. Holy fucking shit! The, the the scout or you know the revolutionary armies here, the, all the commanders are here. Sabo is gonna kick at shit, and you know what's even better? That their goal isn't so much like the the you know the the whole you know Marines and the world government. It's the corrupt head. It's the plutocracy of One Piece. It's the Tabuerto. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I fucking love that. It's like, oh yeah, you're gonna go just like wreck the shit out of every fucking f obnoxious, <laughs> mouth breathing, <laughs> weird, un. I you need a f goddamn facial tissue, world noble ever. <laughs> the celestial. Like, oh dragons. yeah, and there's like, oh yeah, we fucking hate these guys. They have slaves. They're like riding around on um, on Kuma. On Kuma and stabbing him with shit. That they was have an entire, like so fucking. Um, they have an entire hard. fucking um. I like I like moving... shit myself after seeing that. But yeah, that they page. have like an entire moving like stair like <laughs> play, 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 like that fucking moving sidewalk Escal thing. Escalator. Slaves. Like okay, we set them up. We fucking hate these guys. You have the entire revolutionary army here in disguise. Fucking Stelly's here. I'm gonna watch him get like slapped in the fucking face. <laughs> Yeah, we have like all this shit with the Elder Stars, and Shank shows up, this fucking badass, and then, and then they just they just jumped ship and never they, they left, and I'm so fucking pissed about it. I'm so angry. You forgot one thing, that that new villain, the the silhouette of that new. Oh, of course, Im. Big Zyla. bad villain. I, I, another great. What do you call him? Im. 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 Yeah, we, yeah. we got all this shit, and I'm just like, fuck yeah, this is gonna be awesome. Please the don't switch. The one who sits switch. on the throne that should not I, be sat on. I, I, I understand. I like the straw hats and all, but please don't switch. Just, just give me this. Just give me this. Make this your Kakashi Gaiden. Just give me this <laughs> for God's fucking sake. And then, oh great, great, we're back with the straw hats. No, no, I totally care about the girl who can pull fucking 
um, food out of her goddamn chip. Yeah, fucking dango, uh, <laughs> dango out of her fucking cheeks. No, that's great. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited for this. What, what? Kaido is here. He's drunk and in, incoherent and belligerent. <sighs> what a fucking surprise. What a fucking surprise. Can, can, can we please go back to the other thing now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I didn't mind it that much. I mean, I didn't, come I didn't on, it. Greg. That was like, like honestly, I think what like makes One Piece so great, what like puts it above and beyond, what makes it Harry Potter on steroids, what makes Oda like ten times better than half the people working in Hollywood, is the big picture stuff. It's the big payoffs. It's the validating your time. It's the making you feel like this was all meant for something. And when he does it, it's fucking great. And he has all the pieces that we've been waiting for, like. 500 chapters to see together, and then, oh, back to Adventure Time. Does that not piss you off on some level? No, not, not really. you. Because, because uh, I know Oda's plan isn't just about, like, uh, un undo, like, you know, <laughs> unleashing his load on, on, on the, in this manga right then and there. He wants to, he wants to, you know, yeah, Make yeah, it work. But, yeah, but yeah, but then but then we just get shit in like fucking overview panels. Like we, we literally just hear about it secondhand and we never get to fucking see it. Uh, like Blackbeard was like, Oh yeah, they're gonna attack the world. Oh yeah, they fucking attacked um if I attacked the reverie. It's like great, great, I would have loved to fucking see that, you assholes. <laughs> like yeah, yes, I get it. I get it. You're awesome, you have a beard, you have like alcohol and like women, an entire fucking island devoted to how super fucking king big, big nuts you are and amazing. <laughs> could, could you please just show me Sabo punching Steli? Just just one panel. <laughs> just one. Just one panel. Just like, like out of nowhere, just like in the middle of like the fucking everything else arc. Just like <laughs> uh, See, I mean, at this point he put all those pieces together so we could use our, you know, our imagination to fill in the gaps. Fuck you. If I wanted to use my fucking imagination for something, I, I I would do it. Okay, I'm reading this so he can paint it for me. <laughs> That's the whole point of reading a thing with pictures. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I can draw his pictures to see the shit happen. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, Maybe it would be a light novel, back. and then I would stab myself. Maybe they'll switch back to what happened at the, the Reverie. You know. I they would like to think that. I, I read a comment where they said that, like, when they said Wano Act 1 over, that maybe we'd get to the Reverie in, like, three or four chapters. But apparently, you know, as nice as it is to see Blackbeard, we did not get the Reverie. Yeah. Yeah. We got a little, you know. This is, like, the third like, time where, like, Oda has, like, given us shit we want to see, but not shown us. There was blue ball. Yeah, like God, Ace vs. Blackbeard. Well, we, we saw most of that. We just oh. know Ace lost. But we didn't get to see the, um... A Koji versus a Kinu fight that led to the creation of Punk Hazard. Oh, we yeah. didn't get to see Blackbeard versus the Revolutionary Army. That was awesome. Oh, right? that that would have also been really good too. Yeah, yeah, it would have. Yeah, I yeah. I, this is a pattern that um, Oda has been doing for a while. I, I wish oh, someone yeah. in the SBS would call him out as opposed to asking like dumb questions about penises. <laughs> it was like <laughs> it's like. Can Luffy's do gomu gomu on his penis too? I mean, I assume so. Why are you asking this? Is, is this a I just wanted to know. <laughs> great, great, thanks. Oh, oh my god! I, I, even fucking Oda just gets kind of sick of shit. It's like, hi, <laughs> yes, hello. Next fucking question. <laughs> I want to be just like Luffy now. <laughs> They always pick the dumbest questions. It's like Jesus Christ! You're you're talking to Japanese Walt Disney man, Disney, the man who basically is beaten is beating Batman and Superman by him fucking self. Is lasted in the most brutal creative regime, you know, for over twenty fucking years. Uh, you know, is like basically there's a statue for One Piece that's like you know puts him on the level of Miyazaki, and like you couldn't think of something more interesting to ask him. Although yeah. I did like I did like the One Piece bread <laughs> fan club. Hey Oda, do you like pie? <laughs> Why? God damn it! Uh, well, I um, oh, yeah, I, shit, I'm very hopeful for uh, you know Oda to show us the resolution of the Reverie. Oh god! I, I mean, help. I personally don't need to see it. To see Fuck like you. the whole battle. Fuck you! 
All right, we, me and Scott are going to rip you apart in the next segment where we talk about Wano. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's, let, let's, let's get Wano. Let, let, wait, I mean, I, I, score, I, scores for the Reverie, then Wano. I, I, I really like the Reverie, like what they were building 9. up 9.5. For the Reverie? Yes. Reverie was everything I wanted to see. My only complaint is that it, it, it ended. Oh, and you know, as, uh, I did, did notice that also, also – uh, Oda's weakness was like really <laughs> it is like everything I've ever wanted on this fucking series. <laughs> Oda's artistic weakness was exemplified by the Reverie when I, I, all I, the I, female I, characters were meeting up. At the oh reverie. god, it's you worse than Wano. Them. It's so much worse than Wano <laughs> when they all have the same fucking hairstyle too. No, not sweet Jesus. It's it's not. But no, in Wano at least you know he could he can come up with the character designs on the spot and like, oh, switch them around and change them. But he already has the same template characters all, uh, you know, already established, pre-established, <laughs> all combining to this one meeting place and meeting each other for the first time. And then they see each other and they're like, holy shit, is that my clone? Like, <laughs> <laughs> are those my clones? What the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, he, he must be live a very comfortable life. Like, the fact that he put, like, Vivi... Uh, Rebecca and Shiroshi when they all have the same goddamn face in the same room was, was quite possibly one of the worst decisions he could have made as an artist. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully, I, I mean, just holy fucking balls. I mean, it's I still I still maintain it's worse than Dressrosa. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Wano, Wano, because at least at least in the Revelry, Revelry, you have like clothing choices and hairstyles to kind of like oh yeah, that's who that fucking person is. All right, all right, I get it, I get yeah. it. But, what's, but, but then in Wano, it's like everyone has the same clothing. Everyone has the same hairstyle. I don't know who the fuck I'm looking at right now. Fuck. <laughs> well, a brief tangent before we go to Wano. It's, Zavul, you've been reading Hunter x Hunter, and you're not fully caught up, and someday we're going to do a big Hunter x Hunter t discussion. I, I mean, yeah. I, I cannot wait to talk to you about the incredible train clusterfuck of an arc this new one is, and I mean a clusterfuck in the best way possible. Oh, uh, there's like right. two dozen storylines. It, it's great. There's oh no god. Oh my god, god. you, you okay. would not believe what's happening. In You're Hunter gonna Hunter fucking right love this arc. Just you would just there. Just imagine a, a Saudi death match with Nen powers, with the entire Saudi royal family battling it out. Do do they take someone apart with a fucking bone saw? Pretty much, actually. <laughs> Actually, it's actually very ac. It's so I'm sorry, ac that was both topical and terrible. <laughs> but the, actually, you know what's weird? It actually happened before I think that happened in real life. Yeah, yeah. He, he's been developing this for a couple years now, considering the hiatuses. And oh man, it's it, it's a fucking great arc. I, I can't wait for to hear what you think of chapter three eighty three. It's a mini masterpiece. But anyway, me and Goro were talking about um, how much we loved. You know, Takashi I think is not as good of an artist as Oda. But, like, you know, he's, like, a billion characters, and he does a decent job of, like, making them all feel distinct. Like, yeah. the women don't look yeah, the same. Gone. <laughs> yeah, except Gon. Yeah, well, Gon's generic, but... Yeah, but... Yeah. But he... At least this is distinguishable from other characters. Like, yeah, you know... Yeah, okay, I'll give you that. I, I, but, honestly, I feel like it was less of a problem before the damn time skip. Yeah, he mm. did have a lot more weirder designs than the time yeah. skip. He had, like, a much more softer, yeah. more homogenized. It got a lot less rougher. Chopper became yeah, more like mascot every, like, He had, like, female characters that looked different from each other. And, like... I don't know. Fuck. I think uh, he always had the same kind of, like, body type for the women. Oh, yeah. No, he did. He did. But, but he, he did he more interesting things. Like more he, variants. Like, he had the, the old doctor woman. She was a fun design. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was oh, uh, Doctor uh, from Chopper. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know. Right. So oh, let's wait, yeah. Goro. Let's wait, before we in. go to the the Wano, uh, Goro, what's your score for Reverie? Quickly, just give a number. Oh please. yeah, it was like uh, nine point five. It, it was. Oh, okay. so happy with it. All right, so now let's get into the big point of discussion, Goro. Let tell us what, why you like Wano, and then me and Zavul will pounce upon you like a bunch of vultures and and tear you apart. Well, um, Wano, <laughs> you guys are you guys don't, don't have a very <laughs> upset face right now. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm enjoying uh, that Oda is tackling uh, you know ancient feudal Japan for the first time. 
kind of like a ancient few Japan like setting. Um, I think in that aspect, it's it's a it's a pretty interesting arc we'll to like yeah. examine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. It, it's a pretty interesting arc to <clears throat> um, to examine and see like. You know all the the cultural differences between like Luffy and uh, the people of Wano as well. Um, all right, I guess I'll keep on talking, but uh, mm. and like how industrialism is like destroying like the be- the the former beauty of Wano, uh, you know the former beauty of uh, feudal Japan. So I like that metaphor in it. So it's like you know the ma. The modern days, and um, the modern society is like destroying, you know, the old culture of, you know, Japan in a way. That's like kind of like, because Wano represents Japan basically, uh, like old feudal Japan anyway. So I thought that was like some interesting metaphors to like examine throughout Wano and stuff like that. Um, and but I do I like love- the fact that they that he is just kind of railing on isolationism. <laughs> Like every yeah. fucking chance he gets, he just rips on it. <laughs> I, that, yeah. that, that, that is a nice touch of him, like reflecting on the culture. But like, I but, guess the, the issue there's like a bunch of issues with Wano. One, it's coming off of like the shit we really want to see, and it's back to like One Piece adventure mode, which is cute, but not after like you know when it's like the shit you really want to see. Uh, two, I, I hate Kaido and I hate his military. I think he's like, you know, we have big expectations in terms of what we want from a Yanko and his like crew seems horribly incompetent. They seem like Dr. Monroe's manimal beasts who are all like horribly <laughs> mutated and irritated. The, the smile fruit is apparently a terrible alternative. Well, uh, keep in mind, Kaido also has gained more allies from uh, the worst generation, too. So technically... Uh, and they're, the, like, the only people who are capable of doing anything competent. The voodoo guy? Yeah, I mean, let's, I mean, let's just... Let's cool, just guys, look, let's fucking look at his army, okay? He has a guy who has a hippo attached to him <laughs> that, that just keeps eating him. And he has a guy with a lion for a stomach that continues to punch him in the crotch at the worst possible times. Why do they keep using the smile fruits? I would not eat that after I saw one of those things. <laughs> like, I would just, like, look at that and be like, nope. Yeah, um, I'll, if you need me, I will be out back training under a waterfall trying to perfect hockey. I, uh, I don't even... I gotta go. <laughs> See, the thing about Kaido is, like, I don't even think that those guys really technically count count as Kaido's like elite force. Those are more like his lackeys. They're, yeah, no, no, yeah, they're, they're like they're, the upper. They're, they're, they're terrible even for lackeys. Because we haven't even seen uh, the Demon Island yet. Like we, we haven't really like Greg, gone Greg, deep we, into we've the We've seen demon. his top three commanders. One the of them demon got island. owned by an elephant and got owned by a fat samurai Jack, who was just like the bitch. Uh, we've seen like several of the guys below that, the headliners. They've all been disappointing, with the exception of the supernovas. But uh, there's also, wait, you think Jack was disappointing? Oh I mean, hell I, yeah! Oh I Jesus, mean, he's so boring. He sunk to the bottom of the ocean and, and survived. And he's boring. <laughs> and he's boring. He's, he's boring. like, <laughs> look, look. There's a reason why no one gives a fuck about Fist of the North Star anymore, outside of parody. Do you know why? Because it's boring is sin. I. I read like thing, a hundred chapters of the manga, and it was boring as shit. <laughs> I think okay, boring. it was this guy who was super powerful and could murder everything by poking it. That sounds awesome in pra- in theory, but in practice, it's this guy who is literally just a block of meat wandering around blowing people's faces up. <laughs> well, blowing it's other boring, blowing up I other think, other blocks of meat, bigger blocks uh, yes. of meat. I think, uh, that, you know, eventually Jack, Jack could be just a, a little bit more No, no, he can't. I mean, so, maybe he can, but I highly doubt it. You you doubted, uh, what's my song? Um, uh, Capone? Was that his name? Capone Beje? Beje, uh, yeah. You thought Beje was, power was stupid and boring. And Go- yeah. Oda did the magical wonder of, like, you know, did a 180. Yeah, but, okay, here's the thing. We've seen... Jack's power. That's not my problem. 
My problem with him is he has the personality of a block of wood. <laughs> Depending on how the wood carve is carved, the wood may actually have more personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's... He doesn't have anything badass. He doesn't have, like, you know, let, let's put it this way. Katakuri is somewhat similar. He's like this giant muscle hunk. But one, Katakuri is competent. Two, he's a better, more tactical version of Luffy, who's a more hockey trained. And three, you know, he has a goofy side that, like, can get you to empathize with him of just being yeah. lazy and want to eat, wanting to eat his donuts while also being, like, Oh, God, the I only, love that guy. The only one... <laughs> <laughs> the only one who like protects his family. You respect that, and you can sort of understand how Big Mom works because Big Mom's organization, you know, Big Mom is a dumb pirate. She's a dumb character. She's not smart, but her children are all more competent than her. Uh, and all right. also, he likes donuts. Yeah, and, and I can respect that. All right, so Jack isn't he isn't a category. That's true, but really, uh, I don't think that he needs to be more than he is. Right now, but Look, he isn't anything. We're getting now. into the like. We're getting into the home stretch of One Piece. Okay, if this was like the beginning, I, I would accept that as generic shonen villain build up. It's boring. You punch through it just like everything else. You get to the good stuff later. But we're like rounding the bend into like the the home stretch of One Piece, and I'm just looking at this guy going, okay, he has horns. Uh, he basically wears furs. Uh, he has no personality. Oh, sweet Jesus, who powered up, like, the most generic villain from every f um, fucking Shonen starter set and dumped him here. Why is he here? What is he doing? Why do I give a fuck about him? Does he have a backstory? Does he have any interesting personality quirks? No. No, he doesn't. He's boring and he's violent. And I just don't give a fuck about him. I and kind of the same thing with Kaido. I Honestly, it's, it's hard for me to keep keep track of which one is which i just have to go with <laughs> really? the fact that one of them is wearing a fucking helmet because they both have horns they both dress in furs and they're both really just kind of dumb blocks of meat <laughs> all right i I'm, I'm gonna make a little bit of an argument defense for kaido and jack <sighs> so this is gonna be good yeah um i we are coming from an arc where we had a whole bunch of colorful cast of villains from you know Whole Cake Island, right? Uh, Big Mom, uh, Category, like all her, her lieutenants had like wild, crazy personalities and everything. Um, but, you know, with Kaido's force, like, you, you know, you don't really see like a whole lot of crazy like personality, like from. You see, you, like, they're very stoic. You, like, you, had a very... Hip, you had a hippo man who eats himself. And you had a lion that punches himself in the balls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Those and are also you have his like weird mad Maxian um generals who just like uh, again, I, I I would really like Kaido more if even if he would just acted like Lord Humongous. <laughs> I would be okay with that. Lord Humongous? Who's that? From um, uh, Mad Max. Mad Max. The, Mad Max, the road warrior. The, the guy with, like, the... Who was, like, really... The guy uh, with the cod piece and the fucking helmet. Yeah, the Jason that, helmet. That, like, was demanding oil from people. That fucker. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. That guy had more personality than Kaido. And and it's, but like... Kaido's got personality. He's drunk all the time. That's not a personality. That's, not a, personality. that's a problem. Um, that, that, that's, that's, like, saying, like... Oh, yeah. My, my friend has personality. Well, what's his personality? He's just stoned all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, he, that, that's literally just a drug addiction <laughs> yeah although I, I told Isaac a few weeks ago that, that, that there, there was a scenario that would make me fucking love the shit out of Kaido remind, we'll tell Goro what it was and remind right, me okay so um, if we found out the reason Kaido is constantly like suicidally depressed and drunk 90% of the fucking time and belligerent is because he never actually wanted to be a pirate. All he wanted to do was be like some normal fuck like working as a longshoreman and like he like got drunk one night and like pissed a bunch of marines off and so like he wakes up sh like hung over as fuck after having stolen a fucking ship and hijacked a bunch of people and he gets to the next island and like okay fuck I just, I just gotta like I just gotta work a little while, can save up the money, I can like get a ship back home, it's great, and then he gets drunk, 
and he wakes up and apparently he has just like destroyed an entire marine base by accident, stolen a bigger <laughs> ship, and gotten like three other people while like like while going on this like drunken escapade that have decided to follow him around as crew. So we're like, okay, okay, well now the Marines have pissed and I've got a bounty. I, I guess I gotta go do this. And like the entire time, all he wants to do is like go back to his family and be a longshoreman. <laughs> and just like, it just keeps getting worse every step of the way. Like he gets drunk again, like in the next island, like wakes up three days later, doesn't remember anything, completely blacked out. Oh shit, you killed a vice admiral. <laughs> And so he's just, like, drunk and belligerent all the time because he didn't want to do this. One day during, like, like a five-day bender where he's just, like, bar hopping across a series of archipelagos, he wakes up and realizes he's, he's eating the devil fruit. <laughs> <laughs> now he can't even go swimming anymore, and he's really pissed about it. <laughs> Maybe we might get something like that eventually <laughs> when we learn more about Kaido. But here, here's my argument well, about uh, Kaido well, and like well, how I to balance out One Piece, to you. kind of like you know spacing out like the ridiculousness of One Piece. Kind of like we get you know some levels of you know ridiculousness, but we also have some levels of of seriousness uh, of you know of like serious blander characters, I guess. And I think. It, it kind of goes back to uh, this video you you linked to me before, Isaac, of uh, the villain from Greed Island, uh, the explosive. Oh, guy. did you actually watch that? I watched the whole thing, and that villain um, he served a a role that wasn't necessarily to be like uh, a great villain, but he was kind of there for like the purpose of the story. Uh, to propel the story, you know, to, to the direction where it needed to go. Okay, so I'm going to uh, tear up that argument a little bit. Um, you know, I, I like that video, and it makes a decent defense for Genthru, but the whole thing is that Genthru is, like, supposed to be, like, a uh, stepping stone for Gon. Kaido, in a way, you could say he's a stepping stone I, for Luffy, but he is, yeah. like, a centerpiece that has been built up for 500 chapters as, like, the big centerpiece of One Piece. The, like, the pinnacle of piracy, the pinnacle of badass, the pinnacle of villainy. And we we, we have a pretty good uh, barrier of what we expect from Ayanko. We expect I, Whitebeard, who is either noble and has a great crew and is powerful and intimidating and has this great legacy behind him. We expect Big Mom, who is, you know weird and terrifying and has great versatile powers a tragic but yet terrifying villainous backstory a sympathetic motivation that is also twisted and demented you know a person who is both simplistic but exceedingly cruel and you know fits the bill of someone who we should be you know scared and intimidated of but is also kind of goofy big mom is like oda at his best in terms of creating a villain oh yeah oh yeah 100 percent yeah, I I and agree. Kaido, and he's like, so what? So what's your thing? I'm he's, so drunk he's, right now. I'm, but he, I'm just so drunk right now. He's yeah, but but what do you do? I mean, last week I jumped off a sky island. Why I was so drunk, man? <laughs> I don't remember what the fuck. I did. <laughs> Guys, I think you're oh, you're over. Uh, you're not saying yeah, we the, haven't seen anything else. All we've seen yeah. is him being drunk and belligerent. But you see what his organization is doing. We don't like know he, what they're doing. We don't know what no, he wants to do. All we know is no, that he wants retarded. It's destroying. To have it's destroying Wano. It's destroying Wano with his yeah. like industrialization okay, look, of it. That's like it's saying. Like, look, that's like, like saying somebody the invader somebody of deep Japan because his alcoholism destroyed his family. <laughs> That doesn't make you deep. That just makes you kind of a shitty person who doesn't give a fuck about the stuff that happens around you because, wait for it, you're drunk and belligerent. He's not shitty in an interesting way. You know, th th there's, like, no nothing to really sink our teeth into in something that, like, makes us, like, understand him or fear him or feel... I mean, I guess you could say, like, you know, he's like, oh, he's so badass because he took Luffy's punches and, you know, but... Like and, he just, and he destroyed Luffy with one punch, which was kind of neat. Like one one hit that was that was pretty cool. But that that but, was like expected. We saw Luffy do next to, to nothing against Big Mom, so you know of course Kaido is gonna one shot him. I, I don't think Kaido is is meant to be built up as you know as yeah, like, but we're, uh, set, we're yeah, as deep but, of a character as like Big Mom, for instance. Look, but we're strapping right in for like a what, like a fucking three act goddamn play. <laughs> yeah. 
I, at some I point they're going to build up this character a little bit. I and agree. Not to I sure hope like, so. This is but, like the defining turning point of like One Piece. This is basically you know One but, Piece. Like, you know is a generational saga, and basically you know this is seeing the new generation overtake the old generation, I, and that's what Oda is obviously building up by having it, like half the supernovas there. I definitely hear that. I hear you say that and everything. I just think right now the main, to me, the main uh, center piece right now seems to be uh, what Oda wants to focus on is, you know, Wano and the the devastation that's happening to Wano. It doesn't want to focus right now on uh, building up Kaido's character right now. It just wants... He wants to reiterate the, you know, the devastation that's happening to Wano right now. And so, so you basically, know, you're saying it's okay the, for the like culture. you know the late game of One Piece that we should basically be watching a Captain Planet arc uh, in One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than Captain Planet. No, it's not. Not right it, now. It's not. It it represents so much more than Kaido is fucking Captain loot and fucking plunder. <laughs> <laughs> Except loot and loot and plunder after like a six week vodka bender <laughs> it, 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 it with represent, time travel it, it, it represents uh, you know the corruption of moral values and no it doesn't like, yeah, it okay, represents look, you know yes, uh, yes, industrialism you destroying stuff, but you can be interesting while you do it yeah, like, uh, I feel like we have two very distinct stories and they're not meshing well. One is, a, like, you know, Wano and its culture and Lord Odin and blah, 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 erasing cultural legacy, learning to embrace new things, not closing yourself off of the world. And then you have Kaido, who we don't really understand why he's, like, dicking around in Wano. We don't know what his goals are. And, and like, the story of, like, overcoming Kaido and the story of, like, the culture of Wano and how it's tied to the deeper One Piece lore are not meshing very well right now. Well... Yeah, I, I don't think we need to throw in all that right now because right now I'm we're just starting to get a, more accustomed to Wano, like just from the first act, and uh, I think we'll learn more and more with Kaido as uh, as we go on. That's why it's we'll broken see. up into several uh, acts. Capone, I mean, you know, Oda's done wonders. We all hated Capone Beje. He was our least favorite supernovas, but then Whole Cake Island managed to elevate him. To the point where he was like rivaling Law as our like favorite supernova. So who knows? Maybe he'll pull out a miracle. But you know, Kaido went in with like really high standards and, and a really high bar to cross. And so far, we've just seen him like get drunk and run into that bar. So you guys have this in, uh, have this like ideal anticipation of what Kaido should be and yes. and everything. But t to me, is is I mean, Yanko, I think a Yanko, in a sense, could be, it doesn't have to be like, uh, you know, have their epic, like, grand entrance, like, uh, like, Big Mom, where you, you kind of like get a sense of like, who she is, like, what kind of personality she is, like, how destructive she is to her family, what her goals and aspirations are right from the bat. But when we're like in I think in this particular setting in Wano it's just like it's more meaningful to like build up uh, the Wano aspect of it because you know it is it representing feudal Japan like old Japan um, so uh, I think because of that aspect it would be a little bit too too many like cooks in the kitchen uh, I'll say uh, to throw in things like, uh, you know, Kaido's, uh, you know, deeper motivations and personality right now. Um, uh, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to just that, focusing that, on the, the, the aspect of, but you know, Big Wano Mom was more interesting even stuff. without her backstory. You know, all yeah. we needed to well, do Big was Mom's land was like kind of like fictional like a fictional and, and we, we got candy to know land what she kind of place we, we got to know that her dream was to like you know have you know fuck all the races of the planet then have like her children have a tea party when they were all made into giants yeah yeah but i mean we'll be honest with it. like uh whole cake island the whole land like doesn't have a lot of like con contextual like history 
uh, relating to it as much as like Wano does to like, uh, you know, real life Japan and everything. So I think because of that, because of the setting, uh, that's why Kaido's been put on the back burner for now. Uh, and mm. that's why I think Oda is focusing more on the story on, you know, Wano right now. All right, so let's wrap this up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a lightning round with our impressions of Wano. Each of us will take a turn, try not to interrupt each other, then we'll give a score of, like, Act 1. So, right. Zavil, you go first. Oh, God. I'm going to have to give this, like, a... Maybe a seven. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever come out of, come out of One Piece, but it, it the, the the villain so far is pretty uninspired, and uh, coming off of uh, the Reverie arc, I mean, it's uh, it's pretty disappointing so far. So, I mean, I can see room for it to improve. It probably will, but right now, it's not holding my attention nearly as much as I'd like. That's fair. Um. You know, I agree with a lot of what you say. Like, um, it was not a good idea to, like, end the reverie with all the shit that we want to see and then come into this, which is, like, One Piece Adventure story time. On one hand, to talk about the positives, I like the fact that we're seeing the supernovas. I like the little glimpse we're getting of X Drake and him meeting Law. Uh, I-, I love the fact that Luffy and Kid are having this, like, bonding team-up moment in prison. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. But at, yep. this, at the same point, though, you know, I want Kaido to feel, like, more of a threat. I want him to feel more competent. I, I want to, you know, this is, like, the big, you know, the worst generation overthrows a Yanko arc. Uh, you know, I want him to feel, like, a more effective threat, and I hope it happens quicker and sooner so I can actually respect him as opposed to groaning to, groaning about him. Goro, so I, I'd give it a 7 because, you know, we've seen the face of Terrible. We'll, we'll talk briefly about what true Terrible shit is looks like in this uh in this world of anime and manga um but um we, you know uh oda, we have high expectations for oda and this is a big arc we've been waiting for for a long time and you know the art is fantastic oda's having a wonderful time but you know i think it's definitely like oda you could do better so it's a seven for me goro final thoughts <clears throat> i i don't hold the same opinions as you guys about this arc i think um Kaido is actually a threatening villain in this story arc because of how how much his organization has influenced um, Wano as a country, like how like how much it has deteriorated. Um, you know, it's essentially like Kaido is like the enemy of like in a way, Kaido like metaphorically represents the enemy of Japan in a sense. He's like this giant looming dragon that like shoots out energy beams that no one in the ground level can really do or handle. And Luffy comes up and tries his best to tackle it, but gets fucking demolished, uh, you know. And I think there's a lot of like, you know, metaphors, symbolism behind, you know, Wano and, you know, the fact that Oda is, you know, a Japanese mangaka who is writing this and drawing this. I think it holds a lot more significance than, uh, you know, Ugh. than uh, it usually would. Than in another, any other setting, really. I think the setting really does, you know, really does matter more sometimes than the main villain. So I'm going to give this arc so far a, a nine. I think that's being really generous. Generous. That's it's really fun. that's so really far, generous. So far, it's a nine for me. I'm. I'm uh, I think eight point five right. or eight would be. All right. Yeah. All right. So we'll see. We'll see if we can continue this. I would like to do, hopefully do a live streaming show. We'll see if we can make that happen. Um, but guys, thank you for joining me for again. It's always fun to bring back the Lobster Magnet and friends and talking about One Piece. It's the name of the treasure in the Stop grand that. line. Yeah yo yeah yo. God. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with us and hearing our thoughts and our long, long thoughts about the past few weeks of One Piece. And remember, lobsters and tennis, but don't you grab it. All right, guys. Wait. I'm out of here. Oh, 